So I don't know how this happened, but October snuck up on us. It's the 10th month of 2020 already. Don't ask me how that happened. Anyway, I didn't realize how close we were to October when I was doing that sketchbook tour and then I bumped into a couple illustrations. This too, these are supposed to be like sisters, like witch sisters of two characters of mine that I had created for an October or an Inktober story. I thought we could just dive into their story. I thought, oh, I don't know enough about them to like, you know, make a video on it. And then I ended up making a summary that lasted four pages long. So I guess I know a little bit more than I thought I did. So let's just dive into that, shall we? <laughs> So October, for a lot of artists, instantly means Inktober. The challenge a lot of people follow. I've done it myself in the past. Completed it once, I think. <laughs> in the spirit of Inktober, I got some ink. This is acrylic ink. I also have India ink, but I feel like I remember liking this better. It's been so long since I've used either of them. But I also have like a dip pen. This guy. And I also have some fine liners because sometimes you just need them. I also have a black ohu marker, so I can use that to fill in some spaces too. I don't remember how well it works with acrylic ink, but we'll find out together. You know what? Purple nails don't really match the Inktober vibe, do they? Oh, I'm committed now. Cut on my skin. <gasps> Spooky. Oh yeah, flipping ambidextrous. Now we're spoopy. Anyway, I got totally distracted. I wanted to tell you about Hyacinth and Sage, my two characters. Grab a pencil, and now we can get into it. <laughs> All right, so first we have Sage. Nothing in the story is final, you know, because once something's final, then you can like critique it, right? She was an only child. She had long black hair. And she was happy. At least she thought she was. Let me use a 2B pencil instead. It'll show up a little better. long black hair and she had a hat was it imaginary was it real i feel like she looks too old already got a better idea let's do them closer up i'll get this figured out don't worry okay here we go sage black hair and she had a little white cat maybe here eyeballs need clothes probably <laughs> we put her name into the thing too put it down here so this is sage she was very happy being an only child and her best friend is white cat which she never named for some reason or i just haven't come up with a name yet when she was probably about 10 along came her little sister not happy How do you even draw babies? <laughs> Diaper. I feel like most babies are pretty bald. She looks a lot older than 10. Maybe she's just a very tall 10 year old. And then the cat. Cat didn't approve either. Ears are a little big. I don't know if I mentioned yet, but this baby's name was Hyacinth. I know, it's a mouthful. Nothing's final. It's even spelt weirder than it sounds. You know, as Hyacinth grew, Sage began to enjoy her company and her strange, unconditional love. No matter what Sage would do, Hyacinth would always want to hug. Unlike Sage's white cat, which sometimes didn't really appreciate a cuddle. Hyacinth also had blonde hair. Anyway, Hyacinth was one of those annoying goody little two-shoes kind of kids, and for some reason it won Sage over, and quite quickly, Hyacinth became the most important thing in Sage's life, much to the resent of Mr. Kitty Pants over here. Make him take a selfie.
her cat became darker with resentment. And how might that happen, you may ask? because it was a magical cat and it became very very jealous of their love for each other now something you should know about this universe that they live in is that there are a few select animals and these animals have the ability to create and cast spells but they can't do it on their own they need a person they're subject to humans whether you like that or not <laughs> the laws of the universe. And so if there's a spell that they want to cast, they need to get a human's permission kind of thing. Humans don't know this though, because humans are stupid. So it lurks in the shadows, waiting for its moment. All these two sisters are just oblivious and happy. I should probably actually ink one of these drawings. We're going for an October vibe. They're the bad people that did magic, and they're the good people that did magic. The good people decided they would create some kind of spell that would turn all magic doers into animals. And these animals were subject to the non-magical people, who were still humans, to cast their spells. And the good magicians thought that this was the best choice because maybe the world was just better with no magic in it. So they decided to take the fall for all of humanity. Anyway, that would have been centuries before. Denim skirt, maybe. <laughs> Black denim skirt. Now, around the time Hyacinth turned six or seven, she got really sick. Her body slowed down, wasn't able to run around. She was on medicine that made her throw up all the time. And she just generally didn't feel very well. Why did I laugh when I said that? That was awful. Put her in bed. How do you think I can draw someone laying in bed? The doctors had a hard time figuring out what was wrong with her. Day by day, she just seemed to get worse. Dark circles under her eyes. Sage was not very happy about this. By the time the doctors kind of figured out what was wrong with little Hyacinth, it was kind of too late and it was pretty obvious that she probably wasn't going to make it through the end of the night. I didn't tell you it was going to be a happy story. On that cliffhanger, I think I'll add a little line art to this. I'm just gonna rub over that a little bit. I'll take my larger eyeliner. This one's a 0.5. I'm gonna outline the whole thing. Probably should do something smaller than that, actually. And yeah, she looks way older than 10. <laughs> you get the idea. I usually draw more dogs, so this is a bit of a learning experience. I'm going to try and use a who marker right here. Give it a nice solid base. Grab a brush version. This is my Copic marker. I never use black, so I'm not really worried about running out. Strands of hair for some texture. Maybe use like a lighter gray. Jelly roll pen. That turned out. I think it needs a little something here. I could just add like magic shapes because their love for each other seems weirdly magical or something. All right, back to the dying kid. Basically, something Sage had never wanted now felt like it was slipping out of her fingers and she wasn't ready to give up on her little sister. That night, when she's in her room, the cat decides to speak. Little turd right here. I'm just gonna throw some of his ink on the page. I think I'm gonna be turning the page pretty soon. I just kinda wanna like fill this with darkness and despair. Ooh, she does not look good. Clip this so it doesn't buckle too much. Sage isn't ready to let the best thing in her life go. She doesn't think there's anything she can do, but if there's something that she can do, she obviously wants to do it. That's when the little kidders decides to speak. Here's Sage sitting on the end of bed, feeling very powerless and alone. And the cat offers her a preposition. Proposition, not a preposition. A prepositional phrase. The cat says he can ensure that Hyacinth lives at least one more day if Sage is willing to give up a piece of herself. Now Sage doesn't think too much of this, doesn't really know what it means, but she hears that there's a possibility of Hyacinth living another day. And Sage takes that chance. That's a hand. She's reaching out to shake hands with the, her cat. It's dry. It is dry. That's fast drying stuff.
understandable color. So essentially Sage decides anything would be worth it. And the next morning, Hyacinth is still alive and Sage wakes up with a star on her cheek. Now she's probably about 17 at this point, so I can draw her a little older, at least how she looked in the last picture when she was supposed to be 10. Now she doesn't think much of it so, and she rushes to the hospital and she said her sister's alive and she's very happy and she's like, well that was worth it, la di da di da you know. The cat asks if she wants Hyacinth to live tomorrow. Of course she agrees and when she wakes up there's another star somewhere on her body. Now this goes on for a long time. Every night Cat asks if Sage wants Hyacinth to live the next day and she always says yes and another star appears the next morning somewhere on her body. Hyacinth continues to recover and eventually she gets out of the hospital, finishes her treatments, and seems to be doing okay, and more stars appear on her body. Obviously her parents aren't all that thrilled about these tattoos appearing in the night. They just chalk it up to bad parenting though, because they've been so overwhelmed by their dying daughter. Whatever her parents to say, she doesn't really care because she knows that the stars are appearing there for a reason and to her the reason's worth it. Secretly down, deep down she's a little nervous about where the next star will appear every morning, but to her it's like each star is a new memory that she gets to share. Obviously, it's worth it. That is until... Okay, wait, I gotta finish this drawing. I can't... <laughs> I don't want to keep moving on. I feel like this one would be fun to color in. What should we do? We don't want to use the markers because there's art on the other side, but we can use the ink. We can also use the liner. <gasps> oh, I have a little brush pen hanging around. I'll use this guy. As much as I suck at brush pens, nerve-wracking. The whole point of Inktober is to practice your inking, so might as well take advantage of that prompt and use this tool I don't like using all that much. Now I assume these little stars, they keep appearing, right? Maybe kind of put her parents off the trail that it's magic that's happening. <laughs> What would you do? I mean, what's she gonna do? Tell her parents, hey, my cat, you know, that one you adopted for me because I was an only child. Yeah, well, it, it can talk and it's the reason I sent this home from the hospital. They have these names because they were originally supposed to be like family of magicians or witches or something. So it doesn't quite maybe suit them anymore, but like, I'm not gonna come up with new names. Psst, how do you think I am? I don't know the last time I used a brush pen to ink the whole thing before. It's a little nerve-wracking because like if you just twitch a little, which I do a lot, you have an extra line. Although I did do that with the, the normal liner too, so. I'm not sure what this hand is for. She was supposed to be like, oh my gosh, stars are appearing on me, but now it looks silly. <laughs> cat gave me. I feel like I need to add some tone to this. Oh, this looks kind of cool. I like the sketchiness. Do this a little ink. That stuff's kind of hard to use. I think it's mostly this brush is just splaying out. So basically, she kind of resolved to the fact that that's the way it is. She's a little worried that, you know, she's probably gonna run out of skin one day and does her sister just die? Like, pfft. what happens there? She'll probably have quite a few before any problems arise. So she's spending lots of time with her sister. Her sister kind of likes the tattoos. And she thinks they're kind of cool, but she has no idea the real reason they're there. So they're just, they're just sisters for a while, you know? Everything seems fine. Isn't that how most stories go? <laughs> and the stars become a really important part of her persona. I think she's like 19 at this point. And maybe she gets a few tattoos of her own. Kind of supplement some of the stars. Come on, Hyacinth. Draw easier. <laughs> She starts hanging out with like other people with tattoos and stuff. Now 
Hyacinth has made up a story. The parents think it's a miracle that she survived her illness and everything because there was like zero chance of survival here. So they always say it was some kind of miracle, which obviously like annoys Sage because it's costing her a little bit. One day when Sage is like extra annoyed by her parents saying it was like a miracle to someone, Sage asks her little sister what she thinks happened. Now Hyacinth picks up like a little story in her imagination that there's this little white bird and it comes to her every morning and says, hey, it's another day you get to live kind of thing. And Sage is like, no, that's not how it happens, right? But she can't tell her. She doesn't want to just tell her the truth. So she tries to convince her that like, oh, you know, you're making that up kind of thing, but it doesn't work. And Sage just kind of decides not to talk about it anymore. She doesn't want to upset her in any way. So she can't tell her the truth. Now this part of her arm's like all stars. She's starting to get like really large patches of stars. Now the real problem arises and Sage realizes that her scars kind of hurt a little bit sometimes. Specifically when she's closer to her little sister. Bum bum bum. <laughs> she kind of assumes it's maybe just like a little bit of a fluke or something. So she kind of just, you know, puts up with it. But it just gets worse and worse the more stars she seems to have. So the more days she spends with her little sister, the worse the pain seems to be getting. Eventually she realizes it hurts more when she's actually near her sister. She tries to stay away from her. And doesn't hurt as much. So like these areas that are getting really dark and full hurt. So that night she's talking with her cat and he asks her if she wants another day. She says yes but then she asks why did they why are they starting to hurt or whatever. Oh and the cat's been changing over this time too. It's like hair's starting to fall out and it's looking a little iffy. <laughs> I don't know how to draw a mangy looking cat though. <laughs> Maybe if I look up a sphinx cat. Obviously it has some hair patches. <laughs> I made it too tall. It doesn't fit on the bed anymore. <laughs> I don't remember what I said, but she asked the cat, <laughs> why are all these dumb stars on my body it's starting to hurt? So basically the cat tells her that you can't expect to lose that much of yourself and still feel the same. And so on hearing that, you know, she's gonna be in that pain for the rest of her life, she has a bit of a little breakdown because the pain's been getting a lot worse lately and she's not sure if she can handle it anymore. She basically can't really get all that close to her little sister anymore and she's had to just watch her from a distance. And obviously she still thinks it's worth it, but she's like emotional about it, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, you're giving your life for someone and you can't even spend time with them, dumb cat. How do I make this tattoo stay in the safe place? So during her breakdown, the cat says there might be something he can do. She asks what that is. He's a little bit more sly about it and he's like, well, he can help you with the pain, but obviously it's going to cost. And he's like, well, do you want me to stop letting your sister live so that the pain goes away? She obviously disagrees. She's decided to stick through it, whatever it takes. So then the cat offers Smith one more thing he might be able to do. He offers to like carry the pain for her. And so he holds out his little paw thing for a shake and she takes it. Instantly the cat disappears. Pain stops because you know her sister's still in the same house. So on taking the cat's offer instantly the pain stops. Although Sage is in a room all by herself she realizes she'll never be alone again. I tried to make that all dramatic, but like I'm not done with the drawings. The reveal is lacking, but essentially cat demon magic thing is now inside her. Good news is the stars don't hurt anymore, but the bad news is she doesn't really feel anything at all. There's more to the story, but that's like the halfway point, I feel like. Maybe the one third point? I don't know. The ending isn't entirely fleshed out. Obviously, I'm just doing a summary, but 
That seems like a good place to sort of take a break. Nice little cliffhangy. Will everything go back to normal? Will her sister be okay? Find out that and more. <laughs> go ahead and color her eyeballs. That little depth and tone. Just with a little marker. I feel like it needs like some white in the eyes. Make them shiny or something. Watch that with my finger. <laughs> so yeah, what's gonna happen to her? Is she gonna be okay? Her cat that's like been slowly poisoning her now seems to be controlling her inside her. I don't know. I'm not gonna spoil anything. Look how she started. Look where she's at now. I like the amount of black in that and this is just gray. So I'm gonna go in and add liner. Really push the shadows. Add contrast, I guess. I love how these two pictures are like basically, I had the exact same thought process for them, but like they're different things happening to her. <laughs> First tattoos, then this is uh, what happens next. Anyway, let me know if you wanna know what happens next. <laughs> I'm gonna like see this video edited and then we'll decide if this was a decent <laughs> structure for a video. I kind of was all over the place at the beginning, though I don't know if it even is cohesive in any way. So we'll find out. And if this wasn't too bad, I'll finish their story for you. I'm probably gonna keep drawing them for Inktober. We will see. Only time will tell. I guess the moral of the story though is uh, don't take deals with your cat. Maybe. Maybe it turns out all right for her. <laughs> I'm sure there's people who like to be possessed by their cat. My original plan for these characters was to like draw out their story, illustrative style, the kind you'd see if you were like reading the book. So I thought I'd just share the story with you in a capacity that I'm able. Let me know if you want to know more. I bet it can be arranged. And hopefully the format in which I told the story wasn't too confusing. There we go. We can use a little white gel pen. Just try going a little darker. And now those just look like Disney pupils, so we're gonna have to color the whole thing in. There we go. She looked dead inside. <laughs> we haven't heard too much from Hyacinth in this part of the story. Maybe there's more of her later. <laughs> Need to go and practice drawing cats, clearly. This was more of like a different approach to filling a spread in my sketchbook, more story driven. Let me know if you think it works. I'll make my own judgment as well. And then we can circle back. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know how your Inktobers are going. Let me know what your Inktober goals are. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!